In this video, I want to talk about how we can actually use maximum likelihood estimation in order to estimate budget and probit models. So just reminding ourselves of binary choice models, the idea is that we have, as a dependent variable, the probability that our dependent variable is equal to, let's say, 1, given that we have x. In the linear probability model, this was just equal to, in the case of having one independent variable, beta naught plus beta 1 times x. And we spoke about the problems with this particular type of model in that the linear combination of the independent variables is constrained to lie between minus infinity and plus infinity. So that isn't a very good thing because of the fact that probabilities are typically constrained to lie between 0 and 1 rather than minus infinity and plus infinity. So one way we spoke about getting around this is using a nonlinear function, which I'm going to write here as f of our linear combination of our independent variables. And the way in which f works is that the f of, let's say, minus infinity is defined to be equal to 0, whereas f of plus infinity is defined to be equal to 1. So if we were to draw a quick graph of this, it would look something like this, whereby as our linear combination of our independent variables, which is our x axis here, so this is beta naught plus beta 1 times x is our independent variable, and then it's going to look something like this, whereby as our linear combination of independent variables increases, the function increases uh, asymptotically towards 1, and as, it tend, as our linear combination of our independent variables tends towards minus infinity, a function tends to take on a value of 0. And I should quickly mention that the two particular cases of f which we spoke about, one of them being where f is actually given by the logistic function, so f here is written as either sort of capital lambda of beta naught plus beta 1 times x, um, which means just the exponent of that linear combination divided by 1 plus that exponent of that linear combination, or we spoke about the probit model, which was just where we were taking the normal CDF of our linear combination of independent variables. So the case where we have a lambda here in terms of we're talking about exponents is the logic model. And when we have a capital phi like we do in this bottom one here, we're talking about the probit model. But for our intensive purposes, for all intensive purposes rather, the way in which we actually go about estimating these two types of model is exactly the same. So we can speak about them both in one video. Okay, so this is the probability that y equals 1 given x. If we wanted to find the probability that y equals 0 given x, that's quite easy to find. It's just 1 minus this probability that y equals 1 given x because y is either 1 or 0. And 1 minus this probability is just going to be 1 minus the function of beta 0 plus beta 1 times x. Okay, so this, these are our two probabilities which correspond to the two um, possible outcomes of our dependent variable. And we're going to use these in order to construct a likelihood function for one particular observation. And the way in which we're going to do that is exactly the same way which we used for the case of a Bernoulli random variable. Because if you think about it, our dependent variable has just got two potential values it can take on. It can take on a value of zero, or it can take on a value of 1. So if we write out here the probability that y equals yi, where yi can either be 1 or 0, given x, this is going to define our likelihood function, and it's going to have exactly the same form as that of the Bernoulli random variable. So we're going to have a function of beta 0 plus beta 1 times x, all to the power yi, and then our next bracket is just going to be 1 minus f of beta naught plus beta 1 times x, close brackets, all to the power 1 minus yi. So it has exactly the same form as the Bernoulli random variable, except the Bernoulli random variable, if you remember, just had a likelihood function which was p to the power yi times 1 minus p to the power 1 minus yi. Um, whereas here we're replacing p by f because f is what actually represents our probability. Okay, so why is this likelihood function okay? Well, if you imagine the circumstance where yi is 1, so then 
this first term here has just a 1 up here, and this second term here is just going to have 1 minus yi, or yi is 1, so this second term is just going to have 0 here, and so this second term just all becomes 1. So we're just left with our function of beta naught plus beta 1 times x, which is just this function, or the first function up here, which is the probability that yi equals 1, given x. Okay, so that's the case where we're talking about the case where yi is equal to 1. What about when yi is equal to 0? If yi is equal to 0, then what we have is that this first term is 0, or to the power of 0, which means that this whole first term becomes 1. And when we've got yi here as being 0, then the second term is just 1 minus the function itself. So that's actually going to give us the probability that yi equals 0. So in other words, our likelihood function is behaving exactly as we would like it to. Okay, so that's the likelihood function for one observation. In reality, what we're dealing with is we're dealing with a sample of n observations from a population. So when we're dealing with n observations from a population, what we define is the likelihood, if our observations are independent of one another, is just the product of i equals 1 to n of each of the individual likelihood functions. So all we're doing is we're taking the product from i equals 1 to n of function of beta naught plus beta 1 times xi times yi times 1 minus our function of beta naught plus beta 1 times xi all to the power 1 minus yi. And as we spoke about before, likelihood functions as they sort of sound are quite difficult to deal with because of the fact that we're dealing with essentially we're trying to differentiate a product. So what we typically do is we take a monotonic transformation in that we take the log of the likelihood and then we maximize that instead. And the benefit of taking a log is that the product actually becomes a sum. So we get the sum from i equals 1 to n of yi times the log now of our function of beta naught plus beta 1 times xi. And then we're going to get plus 1 minus yi times, now we're going to have the log of just going to be 1 minus the function of our independent variable. So we can just write like that. So this is our log likelihood function. And ideally what we would like to do is we would like to differentiate this with respect to the parameters which we're trying to estimate. So dl over d beta naught and dl over d beta 1. Or in general, if we had p parameters, we'd have p first order conditions whereby each of these differentials has to evaluate to zero. But the problem with this type of maximization is that typically the solutions to these types of equations aren't typically analytic. In other words, there are no closed form solutions. I can't just write that you know beta naught is equal to the sum of x times y divided by the sum of x all squared. Um, and typically what we need to do is we need to do some sort of iterative computational search in order to search for the values of beta naught and beta 1, which yield conditions which are as close as possible to that which I've stated up here. And which is great for us, we don't actually have to do this ourselves. All we need to do is we need to tick a box in whichever statistical software program we're using and the computer does the search through the parameter space for us. So then the values which it reports back are the values of beta naught and beta 1, which are as close to po as, as possible to satisfying these two above conditions. So even though it helps to know about how the computer actually sort of searches for these particular conditions, we don't need to know the ins and outs of how logit and probit computational search models work. But I hope that this video has provided some background as to at least what the likelihood is and then what computer is actually searching over.